two talks i think i will move to the next session thank you dr mr sayed mohsin and what i will do is i think uh, uh, i'll move to the next session the next session is by mr ram kandelwal uh, uh, he can start his screen meanwhile i'll give a short introduction about him uh, so he is our uh, collaboration mr ram kandelwal is the founder and director of heart health india foundation a heart patient organization and ngo committed to raising public awareness providing patient support carrying out research and advocating for heart disease prevention and management across india this foundation boasts over 3000 members including 10 plus cardiologists 50 plus doctors and 300 plus volunteers across india his work with the foundation reflects his deep passion for improving public health particularly the field of cardiovascular diseases and influenced by his personal experience of having a heart attack himself at the age of 33 and his unwavering commitment to supporting the individuals and families in managing heart health. As a cardiovascular disease patient leader, Ram pioneered India's first Facebook group dedicated to supporting heart patients and families. He served as an esteemed unblocked ambassador with Novartis, is affiliated with the Global Heart Hub and Asia-Pacific Cardiovascular Disease Alliance and is a distinguished member of Advisory Board for Patients, Patient Safety Network India. He is a member of Global Patient Council on Heart Failure, uh, on heart failure and Cardiomyopathy, certified in Early Heart Attack Care Program by American College of Cardiology, CPR training by British Heart Foundation and Patient Advocacy Research and Communication, SDF Bocconi. His groundbreaking initiatives have been featured in prestigious publications such as The Better India, and the Times of India. With this great introduction, I think I all of us are awaiting a short talk on him on the role of patients in patient-centric care. Over to you, Mr. Ram Khandelwal. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sudhakar. Thank you for this opportunity. And I'm really glad that we got to uh, collaborate on this important initiative. And I learned a lot uh, today with so many clinical presentations. So thank you for making me part of this. Uh, my talk is going to be around uh, how patients and patient organization can uh, work with clinicians to help uh, create a be better patient-centric ecosystem. So before I uh, move to the uh, content of the presentation, let me tell you a little bit about Heart Health India Foundation. Uh, our vision is to empower individuals to live and uh, live a safe and heart healthy life. And the object, the, our mission is to educate and empower people so that uh, they can take charge of their heart health and create help uh, in creating patient centric ecosystem. Uh, we work on three things. One is raising awareness. Second, providing support to heart patients. And third is advocating for heart health policies for which we run public awareness campaigns, patient education sessions, and policy dialogues. Uh, we have uh, cardiologist uh, uh, advisory board members and volunteer network uh, all across India. And we are currently in part working in partnership with National Health Mission, Novartis, Society of Cardiovascular and Pulmonary Rehabilitation, Asia Pacific CBD Alliance, NCD Alliance, Solve CSD, among other partners. And we run patient support group. We run uh, podcasts, uh, Dil Se Dil Ki Baat, which is patient stories, Dil Ke Doubts, which is car cardiac specialist and other healthcare professionals. Uh, fitness events like Run for Heart, we develop patient discussion guides and awareness campaigns. Uh, in multiple uh, news, uh, we have uh, collaborated with uh, uh, celebrities like Sohali Khan and with Mandira Bedi to bring more awareness to masses. Uh, we have been part of international groups uh, uh, in Milan, in Italy, in Windsor, in UK, and uh, talking about uh, various issues related to heart failure and uh, cardiomyopathy with global patient advocacy groups. Uh, coming to the today's topic, uh, I put a picture on the slide uh, where we see a hospital setting, a patient and two doctors and we talk about patient-centric care. So uh, when we see patient-centric care, what do we mean? There could be different perspective when healthcare professionals are looking at it and when patients are looking at it. Our idea as a patient organization is to blend that and bring patients and doctors closer to each other so that patient, ecosystem, patient care ecosystem can be improved. 
one of the uh, key challenges. So when we talk about traditional decision making in healthcare, uh, it is primarily unidirectional and research centered view based on science and symptoms, which medical professionals look at. And uh, what are the disadvantages at some point of time, they are uh, uh, low patient satisfaction, trust deficit, doctor shopping, lack of adherence, follow-ups, emotional distress, poor outcomes, and increased healthcare costs are some of the disadvantages uh, because patients don't feel involved uh, in their healthcare ecosystem. And that's where uh, we think that uh, shared decision-making is something very important when it comes to patient care. It involves a uh, uh, healthcare provider as an expert of health diagnostics and treatments and patient as an expert on what they go through, uh, not just in the clinical setting, but otherwise also, and what matters to them, what are their uh, choices and beliefs. Uh, and through education, empowerment, and partnership, we can build a shared decision-making process. Uh, when we talk about shared decision-making process, it's not, not just about uh, uh, involving patient, but there are multiple components. So first component that we suggest is patient participation, that patients are actively involved and they are told what their treatment options are, what treatment option can have, what kind of consequences, and which is the one which is best suited for them. Helping them taking decisions about uh, their uh, condition, uh, helping them become part of their care plans, and care plan is not just uh, physical anatomy, but also physical, mental, and social needs. And based on patient requirements, these are tailored. In addition, we also need uh, a patient ecosystem to have a team uh, where a different kind of healthcare providers and specialists work as a part of team with patient at the center and patient needs uh, dictating what kind of treatment care or treatment plan should be there. And patient satisfaction, remaining at one of the KPIs when it comes to uh, patient care. Uh, one thing which needs to be considered here is that patients themselves are able to judge that what needs are being met or not met from the care they are receiving. So there's a value in that lived experience which we can leverage when we want to build a more patient-centric ecosystem. How it helps uh, uh, cardiovascular disease professionals, doctors, cardiologists, First, we have improved patient outcomes and satisfaction. Uh, we have enhanced reputation and credibility through personalized care. Uh, we are building long-term relationships with patients and families, and there's an increased compliance and adherence to the treatment. Now, if we have to implement this patient care model, uh, what are the pillars through which we can do it? First is patient education, wherein uh, uh, Educational materials can be co-created, which can be simplified. Complex medical information can be uh, made easily understandable to people who don't understand the language of medicine. Uh, there's an engagement which needs to happen with patients and their families. And that journey of uh, moving from uh, not in a situation of illness to getting treated and getting out of illness is something which throughout which engagement needs to happen. Plus, there are different actors who work in this group and patients and doctors can work together to advocate the changes which are required. It could be related to policies, it could be related to care plans, it could be related to insurances and many other things. In addition, there are many resources which patients require to learn and educate, uh, which could be guides, apps, tools, for self-management and self-discovery and how to track their health and report their health back to the healthcare professional so they can take care of better uh, 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 health for them. And lastly, but not uh, least, which is listening, that how patients' uh, feedback is coming in. If they are taking a particular treatment, how they are feeling about the treatment, whether the treatment is up to the mark or do they have any differences in terms of how they feel they are uh, prescribed the treatment and what are the protocols and services they are receiving. So what is their feedback on that? So we have to listen that very closely so that iterations can be made and patient care ecosystem can be made more strengthened. What is the win-win proposition here for uh, uh, partnering with patient organizations? So uh, how it helps, it gives access to a community of engaged and informed patients where patients can 
tell what is working, what is not working uh, when they are receiving care. It also provides real world insights into patient needs out of clinical settings and the challenges which they go through, which may or may not uh, be uh, available in a very short duration in OPD 10, 15 minute kind of setting. Plus, uh, it also helps in understanding how patients receive information. So uh, the information which is going to patients, uh, many a times, uh, like on cigarette boxes, we like say smoking kills, but it doesn't have an impact. So a lot of times we are passing on information which is scientific, but patients may not be receiving because of many psychological and social and behavioral issues. So one has to understand that how patients are consuming information and then present the information in that particular manner. Plus, uh, creating care strategies. So if care has to be given, then what kind of information at what stages needs to be made available? Uh, be, mostly the information which is given is uh, in a scientific and research or evidence-based manner that if stage one, stage two, stage three, these are the kind of information which is given. But at times, patient is looking for more. So how do we make sure that patient is well informed and patients are aware of all the risks down the line which are there. Now, how this can be made into reality is co-creating. So uh, healthcare professionals bringing in the scientific knowledge and patients bringing in the lived experience, which helps in, uh, which can help in the form of actually doctors and patient uh, organizations working together to uh, induct uh, patients in patient support groups so that they can interact with each other, they can learn from each other, and all the knowledge and resources can be passed on to the patients through these support groups. Plus, creating patient education material which are uh, in the language which patients understand, uh, helping uh, patients with counseling services which can be jointly developed, develop uh, health screening programs, joint implementation of health screening programs, uh, prevent and Developing workshops which are related to preventing heart disease, which is general public masses, uh, um, people who may be at the risk factors but may not necessarily be heart patients, and vis-a-vis -vis other workshops which are focused on patients who are living with heart disease. So if they are living with heart disease, what kind of things they need to take care of? And lastly, but very important, which is research and policy advocacy, that how patient organizations and practitioners can come together to leverage insights from patients, use these insights to develop scientific evidences, plus take these evidences to policymakers to advocate for the ecosystem level interventions. I'll stop there and uh, uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ram Kandela. I think uh, this is something which most of us should think. I think uh, we we came in contact with each other some six months back when I had uh, accepted this as a volunteer in HHIF. I think it helps a lot of people. It helps a lot of patients in increasing the public awareness for the cardiovascular disease. And cardiovascular disease is not just about heart attack. It's from the preventive cardiology to heart failure, cardiomyopathy, congenital heart diseases and various cardiac diseases to increase the awareness and to help the patients, not only, I think, to connect to the doctor, to connect to other patients, to connect to any mentor, guide who can help them in and increasing the knowledge of a disease or any heart disease is very important. The thing what you're doing is, I think, very commendable and more and more people, I think, so I should tell them or encourage them to join your uh, organization so that more and more uh, people will be helped in this thing. And whatever the, the points you have discussed in the PowerPoint, I think each point is valid and holds true for our community that how do we help the patient and get in contact with them. So I think with this, I think, uh, thank you very much again, Dr. Mr. Ram Kandelwal for giving a short elaborate talk on what is your uh, opinion on this, uh, this thing, how to get in touch with the patient and what we have to do. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sudhakar. And thank you, everyone. So with this, I think we have come to the end of this uh, uh, symposium at the CME. I think we had a lot of good discussion, a lot of discussion on cardiac emergencies followed by approach to how a clinical pharmacist should work and what are the role of clinical pharmacist and followed by in the end, a good elaborate 
uh, short talk by Mr. Ram Khandelwal on a patient-based approach. So with this, I think I uh, I, I will invite Mr. Uh, 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 for a short vote of thanks, and then we can wind up the session. Aisha. As we wrap up the cardiology summit and crash course 24, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to all our speakers for sharing their invaluable expertise and to the Heart, Heart, Heart Health India Education for partnering with Climate Academy to make this event possible. A special thanks to Dr. Sudhagar Rao sir as well as Dr. Ajit Singh sir for making this event such a success. A big thank you to all our participants for your active engagement and to the organizing team for ensuring the smooth execution of today's event. Your dedication to advancing cardiac emergency care is inspiring. On this World Heart Day 2024, let's continue to apply the knowledge gained here to improve patient outcomes and advance heart health. Thank you and have a great evening, everyone. So thank you all. Wishing you a very well. World Heart Day. Good night, one and all. Thank you.